family and happy new year happy new year to each and every single one of you if you're watching this morning it's a good time to give the name give the lord give the name of the lord praise for he has brought us through he has given us a new year he has given us a new day a new new mercies the bible says that his mercies are new every morning therefore great is the lord's faithfulness i am so happy and proud and honored to be standing before you all on this new uh year this new sunday uh, there's a new space and time and guess what everything that happened yesterday everything that has happened last year is now now and over and if you are watching or if you are hearing uh, this message or this morning that means that the Lord has kept you that the Lord has brought you through whatever situations he's kept he brought you through and over um, whatever situation that you and I and all of us as a people may have been in and even if we're still in the midst of those particular situations here's one thing that is true that the Lord is still with us and he's still guiding us he's still leading us he's still seeing us through therefore therefore we ought to praise the Lord we ought to praise the Lord blessed is the name of the Lord from the rising of the Sun to its setting blessed is the name of the Lord from the rising of the Sun to its setting that the name of the Lord shall always be praised right where you're at why don't you just clap your hands uh, say thank you say something to the Lord say say something to the Lord because if you're here again if you are here that means that the Lord a has kept you he woke you up this morning but that means that his purposes his plans for your life still Still has to happen and that is a good that is a good place as always we can always find a reason a reason to bless the Lord but the mere fact that he's Lord the mere fact that he's God the mere fact that he's king the mere fact that he died for us the mere fact that he uh, that he risen that he has risen the mere fact that he ascended and sits at the right hand of the father and now we have a real live intercessor that intercedes on our behalf man that is we we, we should always have a real reason to praise the Lord. I thank you. I thank you in this year of 2021. This year in 2021, um, I have great expectations in regards to, in regards to I'm just always um, expecting and I'm looking to see what the Lord is going to do in the midst of his people in the midst of his people. So again, on this first Sunday of the month of this first Sunday of the new year, I salute all of you and I praise the Lord God for you all. I praise the Lord God for you all.
Um, this morning, this morning, if you will, you can meet me in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three. And we're just going to cover verses one through eight, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through eight. But before we get in the word, I do have one uh, quick announcement that should have shown before uh, me and it will show again after me. But I just wanted uh, to say it, say it at the beginning of this message, because I know some of you may not make it to the end. But no, all, all seriousness, um, you are. All uh, those of you uh, who are members here at the Lighthouse on the Pike, you um, asked for more engagement. And I just wanted you to know um, that your pastor hears you. Um, and in doing so, in doing so, we uh, starting this Tuesday, January 5th, this Tuesday, January 5th, um, we will add we will add a Tuesday evening Bible study, uh, a virtual Bible study on Zoom. That way we can have immediate interaction with one another. So for now, it will be start beginning this Tuesday, January 5th. It will be every other Tuesday. And if the, the band shows itself, then we will add it to every Tuesday. So this is as well. So our Thursday Bible studies will still go as it has been, but we're going to add, we're adding this is not doing away with Thursday Bible studies. We're adding Tuesday night Bible studies from 7 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. And make sure that you look um, again. It should be showing up now, but specifically at the beginning or at the end of this uh, stream, um, the video, um, the Zoom meeting ID and the passcode should show up. So again, Make sure you tell everybody. It's open to everybody uh, beginning this Tuesday, January 5th. And then following it will be every other Tuesday. We will add a uh, Zoom Bible study uh, to, 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 to our services. So that way we can uh, have more engagement and more interaction again. None of us, if you like me, we had not planned. Uh, we did not think that we would still be out of the sanctuary and not be able to come together. Um, but um, the Lord is always providing. The Lord has always made a way. And again, I heard your request. So beginning Tuesday, this Tuesday, January 5th and every other Tuesday, uh, we will have a Zoom Bible study from 7 p.m. to 7.45. Make sure that you get the meeting ID and the passcode off of uh, the announcement that, sh that that is posting. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. And just a, just a few short rules. It's only one rule. There is no rules. The rule is that you show up. But no, um, the plan is, the plan is that the Tuesday, the Tuesday Bible study uh, on Zoom uh, should follow is this, the way that I would like to do it is that it would follow the Thursday, the, the, the Thursday Bible study, the previous Thursday Bible study and see me how, um, if you do not know, <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't, but I'm just going to assume that you're new to the lighthouse on the pike. Uh, we are currently, we're currently doing a complete Bible survey. We're doing a Bible survey. And with that being said, uh, currently we are in the Old Testament. And I think the last book we finished was either First or Second Kings or First or Second Chronicles. Go back to the video and see what Tuesday's Bible studies, uh, the Zoom Bible study will follow the previous two Thursdays um, that we covered uh, in our Bible survey. So with that being said, that means that you have to come prepared on Tuesday with your questions and concerns and or comments um, so that collectively together that we can discuss the Lord's word. So the discuss, it's only a dialect if you participate, but you can only participate if you have seen the last video, because we're going to make our way through the whole entire Bible with our Bible survey. So with that being said, you have a couple of days to go back and watch. Um, if you're not caught up to go back and watch the last couple of videos, or if this is your first time, that means you got a lot of ground to cover. But no, uh, as we continue our uh, conversation um, now will be anyway, um, where you all can immediately talk with me and I'll be able to speak back to you all um, as far as as our Bible survey goes. So please get the word out, get the word out. And again, um, today, today, and, 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 and feel free, you can ask any questions, um, especially I know this Tuesday because it is new, um, but you can even ask questions concerning Sunday's uh, messages. And if that's where the Lord is leading us, I'm fine with that as well. I just, as your pastor, want to be able to uh, have more uh, interaction with you all um, because we all need it. You need it. I need it. Um, and for right now, until 
until the Lord says otherwise. Um, this is going to be our means of communications with each other. But with no further ado, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And I need to turn there myself. I thought I had it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the ESV and the Bible reads, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embrace from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And finally, verse eight, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Father God, I thank you, Lord, in the presence of you and your people. Father, I thank you for all that you have done. Lord, I, I thank you for keeping us through uh, the tragedies and the um, turmoil and the hard times that we all have faced in one manner or another in the last year. Lord, but one thing that is you have proven true is that you are God, that you are mighty, Lord, and that you yourself will protect and see your people through. So, Father, together, we thank you on this morning. Now, Lord, as we gather today on this first Sunday of the first year, Lord, we ask, we ask that you would give us a fresh, uh, Lord, give us a fresh, give us a renewing um, of our spirits, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, we ask for your encouragement, Lord. We ask for your strength. We ask for your uplifting, Lord. We ask for your guidance, Lord. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your knowledge. We ask for your understanding, Lord. Basically what I'm saying in any word that I can describe it, Lord, I, on behalf of your people, Lord, we ask for more of you. Lord, keep us close to you. Lord, keep us close to you. Never let us go. Father, for we know that it is under your protection. It is under your wing, under your covering, Lord, that we can withstand all things. So, Lord, we don't know what is to take place in the coming days of this new year. We're excited we're excited to see what it is that you're going to do, Lord. We're excited to see how you will reveal yourself. But Lord, we don't know, but you do, but you do. So Lord, our prayer this morning is that you would prepare us on how we are to conduct ourselves in the days to come. And then last, but certainly not least, Lord, my prayer here is that you would teach us to be better doers of your word and not just hearers alone. So Father, I ask these things in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. Verse one of chapter three of the book of Ecclesiastes reads that for everything, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. I would like to, if you will, just for just for um, title purposes, I would like to call this message on this morning or title this message on this morning. What time is it? What time is it? <sighs> during the pregame huddle, <laughs> of the sh during the pregame huddle, the Chicago Bulls player and team member and hype man, the Chicago Bulls player and team hype man, Cliff Levingston, would yell out, what time is it? <laughs> and answered in unison, the rest of the players, understanding, understanding what time it was, that the moment had come, the moment had come for all that had prepared, for all they had prepared for and or practice. That time had arrived. Therefore, they, in unison, with a loud shout, would respond, game time. Without a shadow of a doubt, they knew the difference between practice and the actual game. 
They knew that the shoot around time and just casual chit chat had now come to an end. They knew that the next 40 minutes would determine on whether they walk back in the locker room as winners or, ha or as losers. Having a true understanding of what, of what time it was, this answer that they would all yell out, it shaped their attitudes on how they were to conduct themselves in the moments ahead. They knew what it was that they had to do. And on this question, what time is it for us this morning as the people of God, we must, we must, first, we must first hear the question, what time is it? Before we answer, we must have an understanding of what time, of what the time that we are currently in and not in comparison, not the time that we would like for it to be like, no, we have to ask a true, honest question and we have to assess what it is that we hear so that we will know how to conduct ourselves in the moments to come. Our Bible verse today written by the author is accredited to the great wise King Solomon. And in this section of the text, King Solomon begins it with the declaration and it's not a question. He says for everything, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. King Solomon is telling us that for everything that is or can happen, everything that is currently in his time and everything that can happen in the future. Likewise, for everything that can and has happened in our lifetime and everything that is currently and will happen in our lifetime, including our life for everything. This word everything is, is key for everything. There is a season for everything. There is a set. Watch this. If there's a season, that means that there's a set appointed time for everything, for everything. There is an appointed time, a set appointed time from the time that it begins to the time that it ends and everything that takes place in between. For everything, there is a set and an appointed time. Also, for everything, there is, there is a time, meaning that there's limitations. Now, it's, it's kind of repetitive because if there's a set and an appointed time that has already been appointed or ordained, it shows that this thing has a beginning and it has an end. And it, Solomon, in, in, all, in all retrospect, he, 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 he's repeating himself. For, for everything, there is a set appointed time. There is a certain time that these things, or for whatever everything is, is to happen opposed to eternity where there is no time, which means that for everything that can or for everything that has happened, for everything that can happen and for everything that will happen that is under heaven and in our and in our in you and I case it is talking about for everything that can that has that will happen in the earth meaning under heaven for every matter under heaven God has already appointed a beginning and an end. These things are not eternal. And now that brings us to that's how we can get Psalm uh, 30, Psalm 30, where it says that weeping, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Those things that cause you to weep, it has a time limit. Even though you may wept last night, there's joy that comes in the morning. Everything for everything. I, if, I, if you all don't hear anything else that I say today, just know here's the word of the Lord today. Well, actually, there's more to it. But here's an encouragement from the Lord, from the word of the Lord here, that everything, anything that you have gone through, anything that you're currently going through, anything that you will go through in regards to earthly matters, in regards to earthly matters, for we know that the day that we come that we go to be with Christ is for eternity so anything that is under heaven anything that is under heaven anything that takes place here in the earth everything has a set and appointed time therefore if we're already in it or if you're already in it just know that the ending is near to come 
Now watch this. King Solomon gives us insight. He says, for everything, that includes even our lives, even our lives. King Solomon here, King Solomon, I'm going somewhere here. I don't plan to be here before you long. And I know I say that all the time. That's, I think that's something that preachers say. But no, I, I will be here as long as the Holy Spirit has me here. Because here it is that Solomon tells us in Ecclesiastes that for everything, for everything, and we can properly, we can properly we can we can probably extract that we can pro properly look for practicality in today's time because Solomon is not just speaking. Scott Solomon is not just speaking to specifics of his time for the Bible, for the Bible, for the Bible is eternal. The words of the Bible is eternal. So here it is that Solomon is speaking to his current generations and to the generations to come to let us know that everything that for everything or in everything, there is a set appointed time. There is a season for every matter under heaven. And watch this. It would seem as if Solomon has given us 14 different, different uh, uh, ideas or, or 14 different ways to show. And I'm sure that even after reading these, we can add more to the list. But no, actually, if we look at them, the, the verses are actually, um, there, there's really only seven. There, there's really only seven things that Solomon tells us about. But it would seem as if, if we're just looking at it by line items, that it's 14. But no, they're coupled with one another. And the first thing that, Paul, that Solomon tells us is that there is a time to be born and a time to die. Solomon and all of his wisdom understands this. He says that life itself is vanity and the things that we do is vanity for we're nothing but more than vapors. We're here one minute and we're gone the next. And Solomon understands that even his very life, even his very life, <laughs> there's an appointed time. And likewise, you and I have to know, because remember, the subject matter is under heaven. For somebody just said, well, Pastor G, we're going to live for eternity. You're absolutely correct. But our time here on the earth, as we currently know it, is limited. There is a time limit. Therefore, we have to understand and accept. <laughs> we have to accept the fact that there's a time to be born. There's a season where life itself exists, and then there's a season, there's an appointed time when life has to come to an end. Solomon says that there's a time to be born and a time to die. He also says, watch this, watch this, because this is synonymous with the first statement is that there's a time to plant, and if there's a time to plant, then there has to be a time to pluck up what is planted. Uh, I'm not a farmer. I'm not a farmer. I have the last time I probably planted something was a science project back in elementary school. But here it is for but I think that most of us can understand, can understand the idea of planting and reaping. If there's a time to plant while that thing is in the ground for a plant is concerned, it is alive, it is connected to roots, it is in soil. It is nourished with rain and sunlight. But once it's plucked up, once it's plucked up, once we plucked up what that is planted, just like life itself, man, man was formed out of the dust of the ground like a plant. Therefore, there is a time for one to be born and there is a time for one to die. Solomon tells us that there is a time to kill. Uh oh. And a time to heal now, please. I, I, I think that we're all that we're all civilized, uh, law abiding citizens. And don't take don't take please don't take verse three as as a license and to say that the Bible says that there's a time to kill. Now, I pray that there's nobody that you're harboring that level of anger at that you would want to kill. I know I've probably experienced it myself, but like me and you, we have to learn how to forgive and let that go. But <laughs> Solomon says that there's a time to kill, time to kill and a time to heal. But here's another way of looking at a better interpretation for that text that will be more practical for you and I today. It is another way of saying that there's a time to destroy. There are some things now on both good and evil. There are some things that we need to destroy. There are some things that we need to, to destroy. 
However, I think that Solomon and Solomon in his infinite wisdom. And remember, Solomon did not just have earthly wisdom. This was a gift that was given to Solomon by the Lord himself, that when the Lord asked Solomon, what is it that I would give you? Solomon asked the Lord God for something that no one else had ever asked for. Solomon asked for wisdom and understanding so that he can govern God's people. And God said, because you have asked these things, I will give you all of the other things and this and there will never be another man or king as wise as you. So Solomon and his and his and his infinite wisdom and his divine wisdom that was given by the Lord itself. I believe that he's saying something here. Remember that the Lord God is all knowing. He's all seeing and understanding the wickedness and the heart of man. I believe that this is possibly saying it, this saying a few things that because men are wicked and men are always looking to, uh, 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 for conquest and men are always looking to conquer that there will be a time there will be a time. And we'll see this. We'll see this later on, that there will be a time that there will be killing or that man will kill one another. But for you and I, because, again, we don't do that. We don't do that. There is a time that we need to destroy some things. There will be a time in the earth where, in fact, the Bible says that there will be wars and rumors of wars, that there will be a time. Whether it's the time of the past, whether it happens in our present or if we're still here to see it in the near future or the far future for that much, that there will be a time to kill. There will be a time of destroying. But likewise, there's also going to be a time or a season where healing will take place, where things will be restored, if you will. Hmm. Continuing on, to back that up, Paul, I mean, not Paul, I keep wanting to say Paul. Solomon says that there's a time to break down. Remember, there's a time to destroy. We need to destroy some things. Now he's telling us there's a time to break down. There's a time to break down. There's a time to break down some strongholds that we personally have. But there's a lot of systems and institutions in place that needs to be broken down or need to be destroyed. But likewise, like there's a time to break down some things or to destroy and heal some things, there's also a time to build up, to build up. There's a time that things should be built up. And again, I think that Solomon is saying something far more greater than what we just read at its surface level. I, A, I do believe that Solomon in his infinite wisdom, his divine wisdom from God, is saying something here before God is all knowing. And he's just telling the conditions that the world would be and is to come. And Solomon in his writing is informing us that we need to understand that for everything, there is a time. There's an appointed beginning and there is an appointed end. And if there's an appointed beginning and appointed end, then we have to recognize that there's an appointed in between. And sometimes we are, most cases, we are find ourselves in the in between and we don't understand that there's a time for this, that this is appointed. It is allowed by God. Solomon says that there's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. <sighs> there's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. There's a, there's a time to weep. Look what he says. And there's a time to laugh. There's going to be times where we're crying and there's going to be times when we're laughing. And if we're laughing and or crying, there's something happening that is causing us. The, the, the crying or the laughing is an after effect of something that has happened. There's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. And likewise, there's a time to mourn. There's a time to mourn. And there's a time of dancing and celebration. Wow. I almost want to pause right here because oftentimes, as even we go through the rest of these things, our problem is that oftentimes you ever you ever seen it just so just so you won't make it you. But you ever seen anybody that don't know what to say? It's the, they say something that is the wrong time to say it. They're joking at times when matters should be more serious. And this is what Solomon is saying, that we have to know what time it is, because there is a time that weeping is appropriate. And likewise, there's a time that laughing is appropriate because there's something that's happening and there's a time to mourn. But here's the balance in life that we have to find that, 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 that what that true balance is, that there's also a time to dance, which represents celebration. 
And I just believe that far too often we're celebrating when there's a time of that we should be weeping and mourning. We're celebrating. We're having a good time. We're laughing. We're posting. Oh, what a glorious time we're having where if we really knew the condition or the state in which we as the people of God or the creation of God's earth is in that we should be mourning and laughing. We should be mourning and weeping instead of laughing and celebrating. Now, again, with balance, there's a time to do both. I just believe that we don't often know the proper time to do each because that's actually ultimately what Solomon is talking about, the proper time, the appointed time to do so. He says, on going on, he says there's a time to cast away stones in verse 5 and there's a time to gather stones together. There's a time that things are going to be casted away. Mm. But there's also a time that there's going to be a gathering as well. Please hear my voice. There's a time, watch this, oh gosh, if this isn't where we are today, there's a time to embrace, and I'm not making light of it, there's a time to embrace, there's a time that we're able to embrace one another physically, just in regards to the pandemic here, I'm just, point, I'm just pointing that out, and there's a time to refrain from embracing, there's a time to embrace, and then there's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time when we should embrace some things, and then there's a time when we have to back off from it as well. That's what Solomon is saying. There's a time, verse 6, I'm going to move away from that. There's a time to embrace some things, and there's some times where through maturity, you ought to know that it's time to let go. Some of us are trying to hold on to things when it's actually a time to let those things and or some of us are holding on to people. Some of us are holding on, embracing strongly to ideas of things of the past where God has moved on. And there's a time to let some of those things go. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. I'm just reading the Bible here. Verse 6 tells us that there's a time to seek and there's a time to lose. Uh-oh. There's a time to seek. There's a time to search out some things. There's a time that is allotted for you to explore. There's some time. There's a time for you to figure some things out. But watch this. Like there's a time to seek and search out a matter, there's also a time to lose, meaning that there's a time to count those things as a loss. There's a time that you have to give up. You can't, you can't be 40. You can't be 45, as I just turned. And still holding on to your high school hoop dreams or your high school, your, 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 your high school uh, sweetheart. Or you're still holding on to the things of the past. There is a lot of time in life. There's some things that we just have to chalk up that those days are behind us. I'm being silly talking about the high school thing, but there are some of us that are still holding on to our high school dreams. There are some of us that are still searching out things that we should have figured out in our 20s, in our early 20s, in our, early, in our late 20s, or in our early 30s. And if you're in your 20s, some things that you were searching out while you were a teenager. When I was a child, I thought as a child, but now that I am a grown man, I've put away my childish ways. There are some things, there is a time that has been appointed for you to search and figure some things out, Solomon says. But then there's also a time where it's, there's a time to lose, meaning there's a time to give that thing up. There's some time where you just have to chalk it up as a loss. Some of us are spending, are spending more time in things that God is finished with. And we're wasting time, time that we can never get back. We're giving away years of our lives to things. This, 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 oh God. We're, we're wasting years of our lives Still being connected to things, still being connected to ideas, still being connected to people, still being connected to places. There was a time that was allotted for you to do that. That nowadays you just got to chalk it up as a loss. You got to let it go. That time is over. The time is over. There's a time. Watch this. It parallels. 
there's a time to keep, is what Solomon says in the, in the next line. There's a time to keep, and then there's a time to cast away. There's a time to keep some things near to us. And then there's a time, again, to not, if we're casting, see, there's a difference. See, watch this. To let something go, to let something go, if, if, if I'm embracing it, as the preceding verse, as the preceding line says, if I'm embracing it or if I'm seeking something out, uh, which is embracing it, if I'm seeking this out, then that means I'm holding on to it. I'm, I'm holding on to it. But if there's a time to lose or to count it as a loss, I can just say, let it go. But watch what he says in the next line. In the next line, he says there's a time to keep but there's a time to cast away. That means that there are some things that you will be able to just, 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 just hunt your shoulders. You just have to hunt your shoulders and say, okay, I count it as a loss. I'm done with it. But then Solomon says that there are some things that you got to cast away. There are some things that you have to physically, uh, that you have to put physical effort in and cast it or push it away from you. <laughs> or cast yourself away from it. You have to use your physical muscles and arms and everything, the whole fiber of your being. There are some things that there's a time and the time has come where you have to know the difference on when I should be keeping something or when I should be pushing it away. There's, a, there's an old country song that says that you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when, in, when you can walk away, but then there's sometimes that you got to know when to run. Solomon says that there's a time to keep, there's a time to seek, and there's a time to lose. There's a time to keep, and there's a time to cast away. Hmm. Watch this. There's a time, verse 7, to tear, and there's a time to sow. I know no none of y'all know about sowing anymore. I remember my grandmother with her green <laughs> with a green little sewing machine and it had the little the black foot pedal and she would needle the, the thread through and, and she would sew some things and fix some things and she would just hit the little pedal and the little automatic machine would go or I remember her threading the needle and she would by hand she would sew something what she would do is she was actually repairing something she, she was repairing something is what this is giving us a picture of she was repairing something so there is a time Solomon says where there's watch this because this is it's, it's, it's just climaxing if there was a time to embrace and a time to refrain from, if there was a time to cast away and a time to gather, if there was a time to seek and a time to lose, if there was a time to keep and a time to cast away, Solomon says there's likewise a time where we have to tear some things up. Or there's a time, there's going to be time in history, from in the past and in the future, where things will be torn apart. But there's also going to be an appointed season where things will be repaired. Things will be sold back together. But in order for something to be sold back together, there has to be a tear. So Solomon says that there's a time to tear apart, but likewise, there's a time to sow. <laughs> Uh-oh, look, look at this next verse, look at this next line, it's the same verse, verse 7. There's a time to keep silence. Uh-oh. Most of us don't know when to shut up. <laughs> I'm giving you the Greg version of what Solomon wrote. Solomon, so Solomon spoke softly. He spoke kindly. He said, Solomon said that there's a time to be silent. Shh, shh. There's a time to be quiet. Greg says there's a time to shut up. <laughs> Means the same thing. There's a time that we ought to be silent. There's a time where we have to learn how to keep our mouths shut. There's a time where we should not speak at all, but then there is a time when we should speak, and most of us don't know. We don't know when to do what. Oftentimes, we find ourselves guilty of this when we come before the presence of the Lord. See, we've been taught that prayer, that prayer means that I come and if I'm really humble, I'll get on my knees. Or, and then if I'm really spiritual, I'll stretch out on the floor. 
But oftentimes in prayer, we come and here's what our prayer looks like. Lord God, I come to you as humble as I know how. And, and we may pray for a few people and we may and we may ask a couple of religious things. Some of us have learned some Bible verses to add to it. But ultimately, it results in us asking God for something. And Lord, you said that if I ask anything according to your by your name, it'll be given to me. And then we say amen and we get up and walk away. But no. There's a time that we are to keep silence in the presence of the Lord, because how is it? How is it? Do we know if, in fact, God is speaking, if, in fact, God desires to answer our prayers right then and there? If all we do is talk and then we get up, we say amen and we walk away. Oftentimes our prayer is a monologue versus a dialogue. There's not a conversation going on. And likewise, in just, in just the general rules in life, there's times when we should, wisdom would tell us to be quiet. We don't have to speak on the matter. But likewise, there are those times where we should speak, where we should speak up and or speak out. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will even tell us what it is that we should say. <laughs> but because we don't know how to be quiet, we also don't know when it is that we should speak. I'm, I'm, I'm working my way down to a close here because there is a point. Because this question that I'm asking you today is the title of our message is what time is it? <laughs> Solomon tells us that there's a time to love. Uh oh, watch this. And the opposite of love is hate. There's a time to hate. There's a time to hate. Now we should not hate one another. It's not. But again, I believe Solomon is just speaking that there will be a time on the earth. And here's the other thing about this time that all of us may not be in the same seasons and same times in some personal matters. But I believe that universally, that universally, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, there are some things, there are some times that if you are a son or a daughter of the most high God, there are some things that you and I can share that we're all in the same time. There's a time to love and there's a time to hate. It's a time where love rules and there's a time where hate would seem to rule. But we know that ultimately love conquers a multitude of sin. It is the love of God that he sent his son. And likewise, it is the son's love for the father that he gave up his life. But there was a time where they hated him. Therefore, he had to be put on the cross. There was a time and Jesus understood. Jesus, he was not confused in what time he was in. He told the disciples, hey, I've come for this reason. You and I have to be able to discern what time it is, where we're at in time. For watch this. Now here's, here, now, now here's what Solomon is ultimately talking about, that there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. And likewise, there's a time for war is what this is really referring to. Likewise, there is a time for peace. We will. And we have been or there has been there was been times where there was literal wars happening and then there were peace times. So we have to understand that all of these appointed times, all of these set appointed times has nothing to do with you or I or my feelings. These things have absolutely nothing to do with how important or how less important that you think that you are or are not. That as long as you and I have breath on this earth, we will find ourselves in these different dispensations that we call time. The problem is that where we fall as people, that Solomon and all of his wisdom, he's letting us know that these things are going to happen. Hey, they're going to happen. But for everything, for every matter that happens, there is a beginning and an end that has already been appointed. So you and I, for those of us who are children of the Most High God, we can have assurance that the Lord will see us through these things, that these things will not last forever because these things are talking about for everything and every matter under heaven. It is not referring to the eternal purposes of God. These things will not last forever. These things that will that take place here on earth. 
Our problem is that we do not know how to properly interpret the times. Reminds me of a conversation that Jesus has with, now watch this. It was, this was one of the one times where he was not actually talking to the religious leaders of the day. Now they were included in this, but Jesus actually, Jesus actually here in Luke chapter 12, verse 56, he's actually talking to the crowd of people to the crowd of people that is around him. And he's having this conversation with them about interpreting the times, interpreting the times. He says to the people, he also said to the crowds is what is what the Bible is, what Luke writes. He says that when you see a cloud rising in the West, you say at once a shower is coming. And so it happens. He says in verse 55 here, and when you see the south wind blowing, you say that there will be scorching heat. And watch this, it happens. And then he calls the people hypocrites. He says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Meaning the time that he was there, the time where he said in the Gospel of Matthew that the kingdom of God is at hand. They knew how to interpret whether or not it was going to rain. They knew how to interpret whether or not it was they were going to have a heat wave. They were able to look around and they had perception to see these natural things, but they had no insight whatsoever on what current time that they were in, where the presence of God, God be with us, was right there. And they did not know it. And he called them hypocrites. Likewise, likewise, I believe, I believe, and I'm not even, I'm not even after that today, as far as me to delve into what the word hypocrite actually meant, as far as he was referring, it was a theatrical term, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing it now, he was literally calling them actors, he was calling them actors, and likewise, you and I, you and I, we act sometimes, we, we, we because we're, well, all of us, all of us, we, 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 I, I, I happen to like the news. I turn on the news every morning. I turn on the news for a few things, but one of my favorite weathermen, um, meteorologists, if you will, is Tucker Barr's Fox 5 News. I turn it on every morning to see what the weather is. So much so that People ask me what the weather is going to be today. I have the weather. I have this nice little weather app on my phone that is almost to the detail. It says it's going to rain in three minutes. It rains in three minutes. It says it's going to stop in two minutes and 45 seconds. It stops in two minutes and 45 seconds. We have all of these gadgets. We have all of these ways that we, that we listen to people that are able to tell us and predict what the weather was going to be. And Jesus says, you know how to do that. And it happens. How is it that we as the people of God, it, we that are filled with the Holy Spirit, those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that now leads us and guides us to all truth and all understanding. Now, let me just put right here, put my finger right here that this was pre-cross. So the people had not, had not, had not received the Holy Spirit, but the one who sent the Spirit was there with them. And likewise, it's even worse today, or we, worse in the sense of those of us that now we have the Spirit that's inside of us that leads us to all truth and all understanding. And how is it that we don't know what time it is? I had to turn my message, my, 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 my phone off and, and stop watching some services this weekend. And I said this, I shared this on the prayer call that we had uh, bringing in the new year the other day that personally, I don't think that anybody has any ill intentions and it's just the nature of who we are, especially for those of us who are preachers uh, and pastors or leaders or some sense that we want to encourage the people. We want to encourage God's people. Therefore, we will often we will often, and not that God does not or has not ever said any of these things, but we will often look through the Bible text and we will pull out, we will pull out these things that would that, that, that would make us laugh or make us have joy or watch this, that would make us dance and celebrate, that would make us embrace and seek and keep and love celebrating life. We will pick out the Bible text that will overall make the people feel good that will make the people feel good and in doing that the people become encouraged and the people want to thrive and move on but in doing that in doing that sometimes oftentimes if it is not of the Lord we're actually setting one another up for failure 
Because we can understand as believers that for everything that has and will happen, that the Lord will see us through. And that is always that is always a time that is always a good place to praise the Lord and celebrate the Lord in that. But that does not mean that when these things happen that in our in our in our human in our humanity, that we won't feel a certain way that these things are going to come that will ultimately cause some of us to stumble and sometimes fall. We oftentimes, day after day, year after year, a uh, 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 watch night service after watch night service, we make proclamations about this year, 2021, for now, is going to be our year. It's going to be our year of, cel of, of elevation that the Lord is getting ready to show us and take us to newer, to, to higher heights and things of such. And we only give one side of biblical truth where the other side is that, yeah, the Lord, may elevate you this year. The Lord may promote you this year. Yes, the Lord may reveal himself in a mightier way or a greater way than he has in the past, but we ignore the fact and we don't tell one another and we don't teach and preach it to you that if we look at our Bible, if the Bible has any truth to it, if there's consistency in it, in most cases, the Lord revealed himself through times of trouble. All of us, I've heard it so many times, we like to quote Jeremiah 29 11 about that it is the plans that, uh, that I have for you to prosper you and, and, and all of these great things that the Lord does that, that, that we like to quote from Jeremiah 29 11, but we negate the fact that right after that the Lord is telling Jeremiah to tell the people that because of your disobedience I'm sending you into I'm sending you into the wilderness I'm sending you into bondage for the next 70 years. Here's the thing. We know the end of the story that the Lord was with the people of Israel while they were in bondage. As a matter of fact, the people who from Nebuchadnezzar to Darius, the people who came and took them captive, they still were submissive to the Lord. So God was in control of all things, but it did not take away from the fact that they had to face calamity, that they, some of them were snatched away from their homes. Some of them were snatched away from their loved ones. There was a war before it happened. That means some of them died. The gate of Israel was burned and knocked down. Their homes was destroyed. Some of them never came back to the land. But the Lord God was with them the whole way and the Lord God restored his people. And likewise, likewise, you and I, you and I, we can't make the same mistakes. This is what we were talking about over the prayer call. For those of you who were not there, we cannot go into 2021 making the same mistakes. We cannot go into 2021 blindsided of what is to happen in the days to come. I don't know. I don't want to be a false prophet. We, this could be the end of COVID. It could be, or it could be something worse. We may, we may, we may, and my condolences to anyone who has lost a loved one because of COVID or anything else that have happened in the year 2020, but we may suffer more loss. We may suffer more job loss. We may suffer more. Um, our economy may suffer more. We may, we may, we may, but if we keep on ignorantly not looking and when I say ignorantly I mean just not knowing if we keep walking in a posture of not knowing what appointed time or what the Lord is allowing or to happen right here and now we're going to be living in one space in our minds and our wills and our thoughts and our emotions when actually the Lord God is somewhere else and we we brothers and sisters we have to know what time it is we have to know what time it is Jesus Jesus himself tells the people tells the people that it's and now I'm going to give you the Greg's version that it's crazy that you know how to understand you understand how to interpret what seasons what natural earthly seasons that we're in you know when the temperatures start dropping, that fall is coming. And then once it drops all the way, oh, you know, you don't need a weatherman. You don't need a Fox 5 or a Tucker Barnes. You know that winter is here. 
You can just feel it by the brisk air outside. But then you know, you know the spring is coming when it rains a lot and the leaves are starting to return. And then you know the summer is back once the heat start rising. You know how to interpret these things. Jesus says, however, you hypocrites is what he says here in the text here. Luke chapter 12, verse 55. He says, well, how is it that you do not know how to interpret the present time? How is it that we know all of these things? <laughs> we know all of the things about celebrities and all the things on social media. We know all of these things. We know all the gossip around town. We know all of these earthly matters. However, we can not interpret the times that we're in. We, we can't interpret the times that we're in. We have to. And I'm working on my clothes here. And this is what we spoke about. Over the prayer call. This is where and uh, th this is where I'm at until the Lord brings me elsewhere because I need some clarity. I need some understanding. I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself. And for those of you who the Lord has placed under my care, I'll tell you right now where we're at for this year, that this year. Your pastor, this church, the lighthouse on the pike. Here's what we're seeking after. We're seeking for clarity and understanding, not our understanding based off of our own wisdom, based off of our emotions, based off of how we feel, based off of how we would like to see things, based on how we think things should be. No, 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 no. We, 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 I speak for we. I, 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 that's me. And for those of you who are attached here, so I don't know, maybe this is the year where Pastor G, I ain't feeling that because this, this is going to be my year of this and my year of that. And I'm not saying that it's not. What I'm saying is that we need to know what time it is so that we can know how to conduct ourselves. Remember, in my little silly story, my little opening about the bulls, they knew what time it was because how they conducted themselves in the next 48 minutes, in the next 48 minutes, this was a pregame ritual that they would do. One man would yell out, Cliff Leviston, what time is it? And the rest of the team in unison would yell out game time because every single person on that team, they were on one accord, they were on the same note, they were on the same sheet of music, they were on the same page, that it's time for us to go out and perform based on what we've practiced to do for our Christians, because we're not performing, but it is time for us to, to stand up, to stand up, to stand up in the knowledge and the, and the wisdom of Jesus Christ and proclaim his majesty throughout the earth. But we can't do it if we're all on different sheets of music because we don't know what time it is. We're celebrating when we should be mourning. We're laughing when we should be crying. We're having casual chit chat when we should be on our face seeking God for his wisdom or understanding. We need to become, and this is what I told the people on the prayer call, and I'm done, that we need to become like the men of Issachar. First Chronicles chapter 12, 32, the writer writes that there were men from Issachar who had understanding of the times. They were skilled in learning. They were skilled in learning. God had given them some type of infinite insight that they knew. These few men from the tribe of Issachar, they knew, they knew how to interpret the time. They had understanding of what times it was. And because they had understanding of the time that they were in, the Bible says in this one little one verse, it says that they knew what Israel ought to do. Therefore, we need to seek the Lord God for his divine wisdom, for his divine understanding, so that he may tell us, give us that insight that we can properly interpret the times that we're living in. It's time out. It's time out for these false words that did not come from God just to make me feel good. Because making me feel good can get me killed if I'm not prepared. I don't need to feel good. I need to be prepared. We need to seek God for his understanding of the times that we live in. Therefore, we know what the people of God ought to do. Takes me back to my text last week. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him for many are the plans of the mind of man. 
but it is the counsel of the Lord that will stand. I submit to you, I ask you, men and women, the most high God, what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? We need to know what the times that we are living in. We need to properly, we need to properly interpret the times that we live in so that we can know how to conduct ourselves in the next 48 minutes or the, or the, or the days and the moments to come. So not only that we will know, but we can instruct others. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your spirit. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Lord, on today, it is my request that you and you alone, that you, that, 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 that you draw us close to you, Lord, that you keep us close to your bosom, Lord, so that we can feel and interpret your heartbeat so that we can, so that we can know your pulse, Lord God. We, we, we search you out, Lord. We seek you for your instructions, Lord, on how we are to carry out in the days to come. Lord, give us that wisdom like the men of Issachar so that we may be able to interpret the times that we live in so that we may be able, be able to live and instruct others what to do. Lord God, I thank you and I bless you and I ask these things in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. That is all I have for you today. But before we go, before we go, if in fact you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, here's one thing that I can say. Here's one piece of time that I, a space and time that I can interpret correctly, that we are in the last days. Pastor G, how do you know that? We were in the last days from the moment that Jesus went to the cross. And Jesus says that no man knows. And see, here's one thing that we can't ask for because we won't know. He says that no man knows the time and date in which the Son of Man is to return. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm coming like a thief in the night at a time when you're not even thinking about it. That's when I'm going to show up. So the point and what I'm getting at is that none of us, none of us know when the Lord's timing is for his return. And if, in fact, you do not know him as your savior, you do not know him as the one that has paid the price for your sins. You do not know him as the one that has resurrected and now sits at the right hand of God and intercedes on you, both you and I behalf. If you do not know him as that person, the Bible says that if you believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, that you will be saved, you will get a chance to live with him for eternity. And it is my prayer that you would make that confession on today. It's my prayer that you would make that confession on today. If that is you just know that heaven is rejoicing. And we here at the Lighthouse on the Pike Church would love to assist you in finding a church. You need to be connected with a body of believers that we call the church, which is the body of Christ so that we can build one another up. We would like to assist you with that process if, in fact, you're, you're looking for another church, if we're not the ones for you, or if you would like to become a part of the Lighthouse on the Pike Church. Please send us an email to info at the lighthouse on the pike dot org. Again, that email address is info at the lighthouse on the pike dot org. Secondly, I thank God. I thank God for you all and your giving to this church. If you are new to visiting us and this is your first time giving, I thank God for you also. And I also thank the Lord for you all and your continued giving. You can give three ways. The first way is you can visit our website at the lighthouse on the pike, the lighthouse on the pike dot org that again that is the lighthouse on the pike dot org and click on the giving tab you can give by way of the cash app our cash tag is lighthouse on the pike again that's cash tag lighthouse on the pike and then lastly but certainly not least you can send your giving in by mail and our address is the lighthouse on the pike 5904 marlboro pike district heights maryland 2074 Seven, And then thirdly, and this is just, just in conclude our announcements, as I mentioned at the beginning of this message, beginning this Tuesday, January 5th and every other Tuesday afterwards, we will be adding to our lineup a Tuesday evening Bible study from 7 to 7 p.m. The uh, via Zoom, the Zoom meeting number 
and password should be showing up on your screen right now. Please pass the word. This is going to be an addition to, not a replacement, so we will still have our Thursday evening Bible studies. So Tuesday evening Bible studies beginning this Tuesday, January 5th from 7 to 7.45 p.m. and every other Tuesday afterwards, we will be following up the previous Thursday's Bible study. This is because we would like to add more engagement with one another. We had not planned on being separated this long and I, I apologize, we should have had this already up and running, but I've heard your request and this is what we're gonna do. So please go back and watch the last couple of Bible studies if you need to get caught up or if you're new to it, uh, just start from the beginning and work your way up. And please, and just because this is the format that I would like to set, however, that does not mean that you cannot ask any question that you have in regards to our Bible. Our mission here at the Lighthouse on the Pike Church is to study, serve, grow, and that study is the study to show yourself approved as a workman before God who need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So again, this Tuesday, 7 uh, to 7.45 via Zoom, uh, the meeting number and the password should be showing up on your screen. Share the word, get it out, and I look forward to a great conversation with you on this Tuesday. And likewise, this Thursday, we will resume our Bible study. Our Bible study will resume on this Thursday as we continue our Bible survey. We're still in the Old Testament, and then we're going to move to the New Testament, and I'm having a great time with you all, and I pray that you all are enjoying these times together as well. Again, that is all I have for you. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you Thursday, Lord willing. I look forward to seeing you next week, Sunday, right here in the sanctuary. Now unto him who is able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. Let the people of God say amen. Blessings to you all and happy new year.